Warhammer 40,000, story set in a grim dark universe where there is only war. This is a tabletop strategy war game where you can bring to life a force all your own and play it against a friend or a rival. I'm your host, JT, the voice of 40K in 40 Minutes, and I am joined by fellow Play on Tabletop members, Nick and Tack, and together we are going to learn how to play Warhammer 40,000, a game that we all love. To kick off what is officially known as the 10th edition of Warhammer 40,000, we will be using the Leviathan set that pits a force of iconic space marines fighting for the future of humanity against the Tyranids, a race of foul Xenos that threaten all life in the known galaxy. In this video, we will start with a quick 8-minute basic rules and concepts overview before we dive into a demo game. Warhammer 40,000 is a strategy war game where you test your own army against an opponent and score victory points based on objectives. The miniatures that represent the heroes, soldiers, and vehicles you play in this game come unassembled and you can enjoy countless hours building and painting your army and making it your own. Your army will be worth a number of points and your opponent will bring a force to test against yours worth up to the same number of points. An army must have a leader and there are some other rules to building an army we will go over a bit later. You need to arm yourself with a measuring device of some kind, which you will use to move your units and determine if a weapon is in range to fire. And of course, dice. Dice will determine the results of your actions. Whether your dice are successful or not will be determined by stats on the unit data cards and the core rules. Oh, and also a little bit of your own luck. For our demo game today, we are having a city fight. The armies are fighting in the streets of this ruined hive city. We've put down a mat, which is pre-cut to the 60 inch by 44 inch recommended battlefield size, and then scattered this terrain fairly evenly on top. You will need to determine a mission for your game. In today's game, we will use the cards from the Leviathan box set. Each mission card will tell you how to set up the game, where your objective markers will be placed, and what you need to do to score victory points. You will need something to mark these objectives on the battlefield. And finally, to accompany the units you brought to the game, you will need their index cards, your faction rules, and the core rulebook. Here is a summary of all the things you want to have to play a proper game of Warhammer 40,000. Warhammer 40,000 is a game where you and your opponent take turns activating your entire force before passing turn over to your opponent to do the same. You will be utilizing your force through five phases. There's the command phase, the movement phase, the shooting phase, the charge phase, and the fight phase. In the command phase, you will be activating some abilities as well as scoring points. If casualties were taken in the previous turn, you may also have to take a battle shock test. This is a test you don't want to fail. In the movement phase, your entire army moves. In the shooting phase, you get to use the ranged weapons and psychic might of your units. In the charge phase, you can attempt to close in on your enemies in order to fight in melee or melee, depending on who you talk to. And in the fight phase, it's time for power fist, claws, and the iconic chainsword. The information you need to use your units will be on the data card. Let's give it a quick look. To move your models in the movement phase, you will find the maximum move distance they can go in inches here under M for movement. This Ballistus Dreadnought is lumbering up the board 8 inches to set up his shot. Ranged weapons are listed here on the Dreadnought's profile. We're going to fire his mighty Ballistus Last Cannon. The range determines the maximum distance the weapon can reach. The horrifying Screamer Killer is in range to be hit. A is for attacks, and this is the number of dice you can roll. In this case, we have two dice to roll. BS stands for Ballistic Skill, and this determines your success. If the die you roll is equal to or exceeds the Ballistic Skill, you score a hit. Tack roll the 5 and a 2. The 5 exceeds 3 plus Ballistic Skill, so it's a hit, while the 2 is lower than the 3 plus, and it misses. S is for Strength, and we compare the weapon's strength to the target's toughness to determine success. Each unit has toughness you see here below the T. 
If the attack strength is equal to the target toughness, you need a 4 plus to wound, a 50-50 shot. If the weapon strength exceeds the toughness of the target, you need a 3 plus to wound, so it's easier to wound. And if the strength is less than the target toughness, you need a 5 plus, which is harder. When a weapon strength doubles the toughness of a target, you can wound on a 2 plus. And if it's half or less of the target toughness, only a 6 will wound. Note, a 1 will always fail and a 6 will always succeed. Here, the Screamer Killer has a toughness of 9 and the last cannon strength is 12. So Tack will successfully wound on a 3 plus, which he does on a wound roll of 3. The AP, or armor penetration value of the last cannon is minus 3. This worsens the save the target model can take. Normally, the Screamer Killer has a save listed here as 2 plus. However, because the AP of the last cannon worsens saves by 3, the Screamer Killer's armor will only block the wound on a 5 or better. Ooh, Nick has rolled a 4 and has failed his save roll. That means the Screamer Killer's armor is ineffective against the last cannon shot. D, or damage, is how much damage you inflict on the enemy target for each successful wound roll. The last cannon does D6 plus 1 damage. Tack rolls a single die and the result of that die plus 1 is how much damage the Screamer Killer will take. A big 6! Ouch! The Screamer Killer takes 7 damage! To find out how many wounds a unit has, you check the W or wound stat. The Screamer Killer started the game with 10 wounds, now after taking 7 damage, it will be limping around with 3 wounds remaining. As this is below half the total wounds it started with, it will have to take a Battleshock test in its next command phase. A Battleshock test is 2d6, or 6-sided dice, rolled together. If the value exceeds the leadership stat here under LD, the unit has passed the test and won't be Battleshocked. A Battleshock unit won't be functioning as optimally as normal, so you don't want to fail these rolls. An important aspect of the game is the ability to claim and control objectives. A unit's effectiveness to do so is shown by the OC, or Objective Control stat. The Screamer Killer has a 3, and if it fails the Battleshock test, it will go to 0 while it is Battleshocked. Going back to weapons really quickly, some have keywords associated with them. The Ballista's Dreadnought can also fire the twin Storm Bolter it's equipped with, which is Rapid Fire 2, meaning in half of the weapon's maximum range, it can fire an extra two shots. Twin Linked means it can reroll the wound rolls in case any fail to wound the first time. These universal rule keywords are explained in the core rulebook. Units can also have special abilities in this column here. Core abilities you will find in the core rulebook. Faction denotes if a unit can be affected by the faction's army rule. Other special abilities will be listed here too. Some units, like the Dreadnought, will function worse when its health is low. A damaged Dreadnought that has 1-4 to four wounds remaining will have its weapon accuracy reduced. On the back of your unit's card, you will find your war gear options that allow you to customize the loadout of your unit and the unit composition. This tells you how many models are in a unit, and in the case of a leader, what units they can join. The models on the table are not the only things you will be using to try to win the battle. A powerful currency in the game of Warhammer 40,000 are command points, which you can spend on using stratagems. Stratagems are situational special abilities you can activate when you want, if you have the necessary command points to spend. There are a number of core stratagems in the rulebook everyone has access to, as well as faction-specific stratagems. One core stratagem is Fire Overwatch. That allows you to elect one of your units to fire their ranged weapons if they are being charged or an enemy has moved too close. This costs you one command point. You gain one command point in yours and your opponent's command phase. In the demo game, Tack and Nick will show you how to use your units in each of the phases and will also use stratagems to try and gain an advantage in the game. One of the many thrills of this game is learning and then utilizing the right moves and decisions to maximize your turn before passing it over to your opponent for their turn. You and your opponent will be running for objectives, vying for board control, shooting devastating futuristic weapons across the field, or charging into close range combat over the maximum course of five battle rounds. Perhaps don't play with stratagems right away or limit the number of models and units you play with at first. You can tailor the experience to what is comfortable for you and your opponent. We cannot cover every single rule or go into too much detail on all the rules we play in this one video. With that said, I think we should see the game played. Tyranids versus Ultramarines. Nick versus Tack. Let's go! I am tremendously excited to start 10th edition with you, Tack, today. We get to learn a brand new edition, brand new armies, new units, everything's really cool, and I just, I, ah!
I have been collecting Ultramarines, well, you know, for a very long time, and the Leviathan box set is just all new Space Marines, and the return of some classics, which I'm really excited for. So the point of today's demo game is really to bring the audience along with us as we learn the game and go through the steps on how to play a game of Warhammer 40,000. To play a Leviathan chapter-approved battle, you do things in the following sequence. The first thing that we need to do is we need to muster our force, and because we're playing the Leviathan box set, they've already done that for us. We get to play exactly what they gave us in the box set. I'm playing the Gladius Strike Force. Right now, that's the only uh, detachment that the Space Marines have. I'm sure there'll be more. By taking a Gladius Strike Force, I get special uh, army rules. I'm gonna have access to doctrines, and I choose a doctrine to use in for a turn of the game. And I also have Oza Moment, and you're gonna need to watch out for Oza Moment because that allows re-rolls against a specific target. I'm playing the Tyranid Invasion Fleet, which gives me a special hyper adaptation. I get to choose one of three bonuses to my army. I'm choosing Swarming Instincts, which allows me to get sustained hits against infantry. Pretty powerful against your army. Because most of it is infantry, except I do have one Dreadnought. Building a roster in 10th edition is actually pretty easy. Start by selecting a leader to be your, the warlord of your army. I've chosen the Winged Tyranid Prime. As the players say here, the first unit you need when mustering your forces is a leader. You will find the leader keyword here. The first leader that I'm bringing with my force is the Captain and Terminator armor, and will also be my warlord. Single models or multiple models may make up a unit which will act together when you activate them. Making the majority of the troops in this list are two squads of Infernus Primary Space Marines. The Inferno Squad with their Pyre Blasters are great for taking out infantry units. I'm really excited about the new Stern Guard Vets. They're cool. They are really cool. The Stern Guard Veterans are equipped with a multitude of different weapons, all of which you can find on their profiles on their data sheet. I have a Apothecary Biologus. I actually don't know how I'm going to use him. He does have a neat trick, but he's not a medic anymore. An Apothecary should not be confused with a medic. This one is responsible for staying on the battlefield and recovering the gene seeds of his fallen comrades. I also have a Librarian and Terminator armor. This Librarian benefits the squad he can be attached to, but by himself he can bring the pain with psychic attacks. He can unleash these attacks in the shooting phase. Terminators are great at close combat or ranged attacks. They're also very tough with three wounds and toughness five, as seen here on their data sheet. The Lieutenant has many keywords that you can see here that will help him to survive on his own on the battlefield. Stealth means he's minus one to be hit by range attacks, and Lone Operative means you must be within 12 inches to fire range weapons at him. And uh, what I'm really excited for, because I love painting Dreadnoughts, I have the brand new Ballistus Dreadnought. The Ballistus Dreadnought is Tac's big gun. Look at the strength of that last cannon. Look to see that weapon aimed at Nick's big monsters. My Winged Tyranid Prime is gonna be my Warlord, and usually I would try to attach it to a unit. However, the units that he can attach to are not present in this box set, so he's actually gonna be all by himself, which unfortunately means that if he's in the open, you'll be able to shoot him. I've got two squads of 10 Termagants. They are basically short-range shooting swarm bugs. Nick's Termagants are the battle line troops in his force. When making an army, you can only have three of any one data sheet. You cannot bring four Screamer Killers, for instance. However, as a battle line unit, Nick could feel six squads of Termagants if he wanted to. I've also got a brand new unit, the Neuro Tyrant. Some units, like this Neuro Tyrant, augment and give out a benefit to units beyond what it's attached to. It's a brain bug. It's a psychically attuned abilities, and it basically kills things and makes my guys better. It's actually gonna be attached to a unit of Neuro Gaunts that are gonna act as this bodyguard, and, um, and they're actually gonna buff each other to be able to increase my synapse. I've also got a unit of Five Barb Gaunts. These guys are actually some of my best firepower. The Barb Gaunts are Nick's main guns. Look for him to use their ranged weapons to soften up the enemy as his main force moves up the table to bring the paint up close. My Von Ryan Leapers are kind of fun. Not only are they great at close combat, but they have the ability to deploy outside of my deployment zone. Von Ryan's Leapers have infiltrate, so they can be deployed outside the deployment zone and outside of nine inches from any of TAC's units. Which means I can take full advantage of stealing objectives early on in the game. I have two little gribbly units of rippers, they're basically swarm units that come in and just annoy you. They don't do a lot of damage, they don't hold objectives, they just annoy you. I've also got a Psychophage, this is a brand new unit in the box set. It buffs all my units around me, making them a bit more survivable, and it has some decent shooting. The Psychophage is also a Psyker killer, as you can see the anti-Psyker keyword on his weapons. That means it'll do a critical wound when it rolls that number on a dice. 
attack will want to keep his Librarian, his Psyker, away from that unit. My Screamer Killer is probably the coolest miniature in this pack. It's big, it's nasty, it's got huge claws. If I can get him in and slice you up, oh, it's gonna be good. The Screamer Killer will melt Marines with his ranged weapons and his melee attacks. It has a lot of wounds, as you can see here, and is fairly high toughness. Should allow it to survive as it runs up the battlefield towards tax forces. Step two is to determine a mission. For that, we are using the Deployment Deck, Mission Rule Deck, Primary Mission Deck, Secondary Mission Deck, and Gambit Decks in the Leviathan box set. You will determine the game's Deployment, Mission Rules, and Primary Mission by randomly pulling cards from these decks. Third step is to read and understand the missions, and step four, you will place the objective markers in accordance to the Deployment Deck rules. Now, what we want to do is we want to get acquainted with the mission that we're playing. So we're doing uh, Dawn of War Deployment. So we've got this long edge is mine, that long edge is yours. Good luck. Good luck to you, too. I've got more guys than you. Uh, you do. I am outnumbered, and it may be pretty tough. Primary mission today is take and hold. From the second battle round, we get to score the primary mission. You score five points for holding one objective, five points for holding two objectives, five points for holding three. The primary mission tells you how both players will be scoring victory points. The mission rules will provide added rules that augment the game. The mission rule that we pulled, luckily, was chilling rain. Just means that no other effect is in play. Step five is to create the battlefield. Today we are playing on a 60 inch by 44 inch battlefield. Rules for the terrain are found in the core rulebook. We've already placed the objective markers. We've already created the battlefield just to make it a little bit easier on us as we're going through this game. Step six, we determine attacker and defender and the winner decides which they want to be and this will impact deployment and which card deck they get. So we roll for attacker and defender? We do. Here we go. All right, oh, you so I it. win. So now it's a choice. I get to choose if I'm the attacker and defender. Uh, really what that comes down to is who deploys first, and I'm gonna choose to be the defender. Once you've chosen attacker and defender, go to step seven, which is selecting the secondary missions. While the primary mission has objectives both players need to do to score victory points, the secondary mission objectives are unique to each player. Each player can choose to play fixed missions or tactical missions. In fixed missions, you select two secondary missions to score in every round of the game. And in tactical missions, you will be randomly pulling secondary missions and scoring them once the game begins. Once you have scored a tactical mission secondary, you draw a new mission secondary and try to score that one. For ease, both players have chosen fixed for their secondaries, meaning they will try to score the same secondaries every turn. One of them is no prisoners. I basically score victory points for every unit that I kill. And I've also got to extend battle lines. I need to hold my home objective and get one of them in no man's land. So I've chosen secure no man's land. It's a little bit different than yours. I've got to hold two objectives in no man's land here to score me five points. I also have assassination. You have a lot of characters. If I kill those characters, I get points. After you know how you're going to score points, but before deploying, declare leaders, warlords, enhancements, reserves, and transports. Now we get to choose enhancements for our characters. Typically you get to choose up to three for your army. Just to keep this simple, we're gonna play with one. I'm hoping you're gonna do the same. The enhancement I'm taking is Artificer Armor. I'm putting that on my Lieutenant. I'm also gonna choose my Winged Tyranid Prime. I wanna keep it perfectly adapted. It basically allows it one per turn to get a free reroll, which is pretty useful. It's a Captain and Terminator Armor. He can attach to a unit of uh, Terminators. Time to declare reserves and transport. So those are the models that are gonna deploy off the board or in a transport. So the Terminator Captain that is attached to the Terminators is gonna use the Deep Strike rule that allows it to be in reserves to start the game. Deep Strike means Terminators can appear on the battlefield over nine inches away from an enemy unit. The Captain's benefit of the reroll charge, there's more of a chance that they'll be able to make it out of the fight. I've also got the Librarian and Terminator Armor, also using Deep Strike, also going in reserves. I'm also going to take advantage of Deep Strikes. I have my Winged Tyranid Prime again. He's going to use his Deep Strike ability to go in reserves. I'm also going to take my unit of Rippers. They're going to use Deep Strike to go in reserves as well. Step nine, you deploy your forces, starting with the Defender. The deployment card tells you where your deployment zones are, and you must deploy your forces in that zone. Players will alternate placing their units on the battlefield until their entire eligible force is on the field. As the Defender, I need to place the first unit. Do I get to see where you're going? The Inferno Squad here, I need to start thinking about objectives. They're gonna go behind this building so that you can't just outright shoot them. Aww. Hoping to get to that objective one day. All right, so now it's my turn to put a unit on the board. Hmm, hmm. So I'm gonna go with my Psychophage next. It gives bonuses to survivability of Tyranid models around it. So I kinda wanna put it down so I know where everything else is going. I'm also gonna put it over here so it has just a little bit of cover. I need to hold my home objective. I also need to get one in No Man's Land. So my Stringer Vets want to attack that middle. 
I think next I'm actually gonna put my Neuro Gaunts with the Neuro Tyrant. And the reason I'm doing that is because they have an extended Synapse range. It allows me to think of where I'm gonna put all my other guys to make sure everyone stays within Synapse range. Probably my scariest long range shooting. And you're putting it down first. It's gonna camp on that objective. And these Termagons are gonna deploy right on the line, ready to rush forward and shoot you. Now, one thing you have to keep in mind when doing larger units is unit coherency. Every model has to be within two inches of another model in that unit. Your plan is to rush forward? Oh, yes. I, I'm not being subtle here. I want to barbecue <laughs> any bugs that rush forward towards me. Back to me, and I think it's time to put the Von Ryan Leapers and they will go up front in no man's land, wherever I want. As long as it's nine inches away from you, they're gonna take advantage of this statue to get cover, but also to get the objective and a possible first turn charge against your stern guard. The disadvantage to having deployed first and the disadvantage to having less units than you is I need to now drop my lone operative and I haven't seen where you're Screamer Killer's gone? <laughs> he wants to eat him. And I haven't seen where your bog guns have gone, and I really wanted that information. I'm hoping that you're going to focus on this mess in the middle, and he's going to go ready to pounce on that objective over there. I think it's time for the scariest beastie in this box set, the Screamer Killer. He screams as he kills you. It's going to go right here. Right down. Very close to the line, ready to rush up and eat you. So you're out of units to deploy because your last unit is in reserve. So now it goes to me with my last unit, the Barb Gaunts, my only long range shooting. And they're gonna go right here. I have all my army on, on the field except for my two units that are in reserves. Note here that reserves cannot come in on the first turn of a game. However, as we wanna show off these abilities for you to see them in action, we're choosing to allow reserves in on turn one. Again, in a regular game of Leviathan, your reserves cannot come in turn one, so do not do this at home. In step 10, we determine first turn. Both players roll, and the winner must go first. Now, the all-important roll, who gets to go first? Do you want to go first or second? I think in this game, I would really like to go first, because I just want to rush up and get as close to you as possible, as soon as possible before you shoot me. And I've got fairly long-range guns, so I would actually like to go first as well to try to whittle down the forces that are coming at me. Highest dice wins. I got a four. And I got a two. Oh, oh no. Oh, that means I've got first turn. Yes. I think the Space Marines might be in a little bit of trouble. Yeah, you'll be fine. So where do you go to get all the things you need to play a game of Warhammer 40,000? Sponsoring our endeavor to inspire as many people as we can to play this game we love, we have Frontline Gaming for North America and Wayland Games for Europe. Wayland Games carries everything a hobbyist and or player needs. They have books, hobby supplies, and of course, Warhammer miniatures. As the biggest retailer in the United Kingdom, I'm sure they'll have what you need and what you want at a great price. We know many people in the UK who have enjoyed the great customer experience of buying from Wayland Games. Frontline Gaming is not only a retailer of Warhammer 40,000 products in the US, but they also have a great catalog of mats and terrain that they've created themselves. We are using a mat and terrain from Frontline Gaming in this video. On top of the products, they also hold some of the biggest Warhammer 40,000 events in the USA, which we have had the privilege of attending many times. They are truly champions of the tabletop, and we encourage you to visit them for your tabletop gaming needs from events to products to even paint commissions. Make sure to use the links in the description below and we hope to see you telling your own stories at the tabletop soon. Command phase is first. That's where commandy things happen. Commandy? It's, it's a term. It's, look it up. Okay. First thing you get is we each get a command point. This is a very important resource that you are very precious. You don't get much of them, and they allow you to do stratagems. We're each going to get one at the beginning of every command phase. The next thing we do is any units that have abilities that trigger in the command phase. All Tyranid models get a special rule called Synapse. As long as I'm in range of some of my leader bugs, it basically allows me to roll 3d6 instead of 2d6 when I do battle shock tests, which is really powerful. And very unlikely that I'll ever be suffering from battle shock. My Neuro Tyrant can actually pick two units to count as being in synapse range. It's called synaptic relay. So as long as a unit starts within 12 inches of them right now, I can do that. So I'm actually gonna pick my Termagants right here and my Termagants right here so that they will always count as being in synapse range until my next command phase. 
Command phase done, now movement phase. I'm gonna start with my Von Ryan Leapers. They're fun. They get to move 10 inches. Look how fast that is. They're gonna go right up here, almost in range right away of those stern guard. You're forcing my hand a little bit here, Nick. Fire Overwatch is a stratagem for one command point, and it allows me to elect a unit in either the movement phase or when I'm charged to fire at you. You've moved into range of my Inferno Squad. I could choose to fire Overwatch now, However, I see a lot of other things coming and I know you've got a Tyranid Prime. It hurts me to do this, but I think I'm gonna hold off. Okay, well, I'm gonna continue moving then. So I'm gonna actually gonna take my Termagants and they're gonna advance. Advance simply means you roll a d6 and add that many inches to your movement stat. All these Termagants have assault weapons, which means they can shoot normally, even if though they advance. Normally you can't shoot if you advance, but these guys can. They got a one, which is terrible, but you know what? That's okay. That's okay. So they're just gonna move up to here. Not very far, but it should be in range. So I'm just gonna move the rest of them up here, making sure they stay within two inches of two models. These Termagons right here, and they're gonna do the exact same thing. They're also gonna advance. I'm hoping a roll better than a one. Six, there we go. Because Termagons have the infantry keyword, they can just move through walls of ruins as if they're not there. They're assumed to be going through windows or breaking holes in walls or whatever they need to do. And I can just go straight through and get on that objective. Isn't that beautiful? Right on that objective. I'll take that little token with me to make sure I remember that they are in synaptic range. We're gonna continue to advance up the board. My screamer killer just wants to scream up the board to try to kill you. He won't be able to get in range this turn, but he's gonna advance. This does mean that he won't be able to charge, but I'm not gonna even charge range anyway. So I roll a d6. I got another six. That screamer killer is just barreling up the board. His gun is actually an assault weapon, so that does mean I might be able to shoot you. The psychophage will also advance. It'll go right behind the screamer killer. Barbgaunts are gonna move up. They are not gonna advance because their weapons are not assault. And that means if they were to advance, they wouldn't be able to fire their weapons. I've got my Neuro Tyrant and Neuro Gaunts. They don't wanna move up very much. They're just gonna move up a little bit because I actually wanna still hold this objective back here. At the end of my movement phase, something else gets to happen. Anything that I have in reserves that qualifies, I can bring on right now at the end of my movement phase. Again, in a regular game of Leviathan, your reserves cannot come in turn one, so do not do this at home. I've got my Winged Tyranid Prime and my Ripper Squad. <laughs> so where are they gonna go? The restriction is they can't land within nine inches of an enemy unit. We actually have a nine inch widget that allows us to show how far away things are right now. So I actually wanna put my Winged Tyranid Prime oh. right here. What that allows me to do is potentially get a charge, but also it allows me to have a synapse range on these leapers so that they won't have issues with battle shock. My Ripper Swarm, I think I actually want to tie up and threaten your backfield units there. So I'm gonna come around to your side, be back here, and maybe I can make a charge here and just tie up your squad so you can't go confirm that objective. Time to go into the shooting phase. Everything gets to shoot if they're in range. I would like to go with the Screamer Killer first because it's so cool. So I select a unit to fire and I select a target. I'm gonna try to kill these flamers because I don't want you to overwatch and kill all of those uh, leapers. It has a random amount of shots. It actually has D6 plus three shots, but it also has the keyword blast, which means for every five models in the enemy target, I get an extra attack. So it's gonna be D6 plus four. I wanna get two attacks plus four. So four, five, six dice. The ballista skill of the weapon is four up, which means I only need a four higher to hit. Oh, there we go. I got three successes mm -hmm. and three failures. So now I roll to see if I wound you. The strength of the weapon is eight. The toughness of your model is four, which means I double the strength of your toughness, which means I'm gonna be wounding on twos. Uh -oh. Give me three twos, no ones. Three successes. Uh -oh. Now it goes over to you and you try to save them with your dice. Normally a Space Marine has an armor of three. So I would succeed on a three. However, that weapon has an AP value of two. So you worsen my save by two. I now need fives. To ignore the wounds that you've just done, I need to roll five ups. You got one, you got one. One damage per wound. Uh, Primaris Marine only has two wounds, which means the two fails equals one dead Marine. After the Screamer Killer shoots, it is a special rule. You have to take a Battle Shock test immediately. You're so overwhelmed by firepower. So Battle Shock test, two dice. You're trying to roll above your leadership value. I've got a leadership value of six. However, your Screamer Killer has a minus one to that. So I need to roll a seven or better or else they're Battle Shocked. Oh. Luckily I got a 10. They are not Battle Shocked. They are okay. They can still function normally. If I had managed to battle shock them, they would not be able to receive stratagems, which means you wouldn't be able to do the Overwatch stratagem on, on them. And that would, that would have been great for me. And my OC goes to zero. 
and your OC would go to zero. Yes. I'm gonna go next with the Barb Gods. There's only three of them in range of your Flamer Squad there. I still wanna kill those Flamer Squads. I think they're a big threat. They also get a random amount of shots, D6 shots each. So I have three guys, so three dice. Mm -hmm. Five, six, seven, eight, nine shots. My ballistic skill is four. Every four is a success. I have five misses and five successes. So I've actually rolled a six, which is a critical hit. Critical hit by itself doesn't do anything, but it triggers special rules. For instance, I have the army-wide rule, sustained hits one, which means for every critical hit I get, one right there, I get an extra hit, the sustained hits one. So it counts as an extra hit. So I get an extra dice that counts as a hit, and now I roll the wound. What is the strength of that weapon? The strength of this weapon is five against your toughness of four. I'm better than your toughness, which means I'm gonna wound you on threes. On threes, and I have four successes. I need to roll four dice for my saves. What is the AP value of the, your weapon? They do not have an AP value, which means you'll get your full save. Okay, and a full save on a Space Marine is three on their power armor, of which I make three, but I fail one, which means I take a single wound. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a die. I'm gonna show how many wounds it has remaining, which is one, and put it beside a Space Marine that has taken a wound. These Barb Gaunts also have a special rule when they shoot at something. Their rule is called Disruptive Bombardment, which means if they hit something, that unit is now minus two to its movement characteristics, minus two to advance rolls, minus two to charge rolls. That is rough because they need to get into the fight, and now that you've made that a lot tougher for them to do so. And that's an effect till the end of your turn. I have one last unit to fire with. My Termagants right here that are in range. Only the front four are in range, so those four are gonna shoot at these guys right here. You're gonna try to take off the last wound off of that Marine. My Ballista skill is four, trying to get a four higher. I got two hits. One of them, however, is a critical hit. Triggers sustained hits, which gives me an extra hit. Strength of the weapon is five, which is more than your toughness of four, which means I'm gonna wound on a three. I have two wounds and one fail. Three up, here we go. Oh, you oh, got one. Fail one. Once you've taken a wound on a model, that model has to continue to take wounds until it's dead and then another model can take a wound. Unfortunately, I filled one, so the one dies. None of my other units that have shooting abilities are in range. We move on to the charge phase. In the charge phase, I choose units within 12 inches to try to attempt to charge in and bite you. I've got three eligible units. My winged Tyranid Prime, my Von Ryan Leapers, and my Ripper Swarms. The two that came out of reserves landed more than nine inches away. So they're gonna need nine inch charges. However, you've got these right in my face. They're, they just need a very short charge. Exactly. So I'm actually gonna go with that really easy charge first. Okay. The Leapers are gonna declare a charge against those Stern Guard. Spending the one command point on the Strategy and Fire Overwatch, and I'm going to do that with the Inferno Squad here, trying to whittle down charging unit of uh, Von Ryan Leapers before they crash into my line. Cool power blasters, D6 shots each, torrent, ignore cover. Oh. So you're not gonna get the cover save bonus. D6 for each weapon, there's three of them, so three is... Oh, there we go. 10, 13 hit. So the keyword torrent, what that means is that it automatically hit the target. So I go straight to wounding. Normally, when you fire overwatch, your blitz skill moves to six and six only. So only sixes would hit. They're the best at overwatch. Yes. 100%. So, uh, it is a strength five weapon to your toughness of five, so I need fours to wound. So that is only five wounds. Look at all those failures. Oh, they're lovely. I like these. My save is a four up, and there's no AP on this, so I'm trying to get fours or higher. And I, there we go. Okay, so three have failed. I have three wounds on each model, which means I'm gonna lose a model because three wounds. So one of these guys are dead, and I'm gonna take the guy way off in the back here. Ah! You're making a charge. You yes. two D6. Oh, two dice, and that's how many inches I go. I made it more than happy with a four, five, six. You roll a six, which means you can move six. You need to end that charge closest to the enemy uh, unit. If you can base, you must base. Well, then my Ripper Swarm back there are gonna try to charge your Apothecary Biologists. They're more than nine inches away because they deep struck today, and let's see if they get in range. With a six, seven, eight, nine, that is enough to get in engagement range, so they'll be one, which is one inch away. Mm -hmm. That will put them into combat with your Biologus. I told you those guys would be annoying. <laughs> and then lastly, about one charge here, my winged Tyranid Prime is going to try to support the Leapers and get in combat with those Stern Guard. So again, two dice, trying to get a high number. I started more than nine inches away from you, so I gotta get a nine to get within that one inch engagement range. Okay, see if you do it. 
five, six, seven, eight. I fail. That is so close. Do, do you remember that cool enhancements we would put on our army at the beginning of the game? I, I actually put on this leader, I put an enhancement. It allows this miniature to reroll a result once per turn. And I, I'm going to guess... choose that right now. All right. Because of result, both dice have to be rerolled. See if I can get that fabled nine inches. Five, six, seven, eight, nine. It's enough. It's in. Yes. All right. Hey, how is this? What looks like chicken? That concludes the charge phase. We move on to the best phase, the fight phase. Best phase for you. Best phase for me in this game. And the fight phase is going to happen right now. All models that are in engagement range of each other get to fight. You alternate going back and forth, choosing miniatures that are in engagement range to fight. It actually starts with the defending player. By charging, my models now gain the special rule fight first. Okay. So I get to I get to fight first with all of my miniatures before you get a chance. So I'm gonna start with the Von Ryan Leapers. So they have six attacks each. That's so I'm gonna roll 12 dice. I'm trying to hit on threes against those stern guard right there. Here we go. Trying to get some threes. Oh, it's a good roll. I'm gonna wound you on a three because I'm strength of five, which is better than your toughness. Oh, really good again. Three failures and five successes. Five successes, that's a little scary because you actually have AP on that weapon. They're AP one, which means reducing your armor save by one. Typically I have a save of three, I go to fours. So anything below a four is a wound. Oh no! One guy is dead because they have two wounds each and one guy is on one wound. Like but that. the fun hasn't ended still. No, the fun hasn't ended, it's just beginning. Because now we're gonna go with the wing tier in prime and he's gonna also fight those stern guard. I hit everything. Uh -oh. All six attacks succeeded. And it's strength six to your toughness of four, better than your toughness, not double, so I wound on threes. Sure. I have three failures. Oh, no. Take three saves at minus one. Right. But the scary thing about the minus one is this time the damage is two. Each failure kills a guy. That's true. Oh, oh, so one failure, two successes, which means one guy takes two damage. One model already had one damage, so it only has one wound left. However, damage doesn't spill over to another model. Kill the guy, but the extra damage doesn't do me any good. When I elect the Rippers to fight, they get to do what's called a pile-in move first, which means they can move up to three inches as long as they're going closer and into base contact, if they can, of their target. Right, so both of them are going to now touch the base of the Biologus. You're gonna take a nibble out of my ankles. Is that what's Three, four, happening? Five, six. six attacks per Ripper Swarm that are gonna go into the apothecary there. And they hit on fives. But I get sustained hits, so that six becomes an extra hit. Right. Your toughness is six, which is way more than double the strength of this weapon, which means I can only wound you on sixes. Right. And I got one. Just one. Look at that. Scarf and Starmer, so I have a three up. Uh, that is a one. Hey, it's a failure! So, <laughs> has one of his toes chewed off. That is the end of my part of the fight phase because I have no more units to fight with. I fought with each one individually. Now it's your turn because all the fights first is now done. So now we do with everybody else that does not have fight first. Starting with the defending player. So that's you. Freshly angry. The apothecary? The apothecary yeah, is going to in. fight back. Apothecary has four attacks. So I'm just going to try to punch you with his canister. <laughs> Uh, I hit on three, so all of those are actually hits. Two. Only toughness two against my strength of four. So, so I'm winning on twos. twos. And you have uh, an incredible save of six. On sixes, I'm gonna read three sixes right here. Three sixes. I got one to go through. Uh, doesn't even kill a base. Moving right along, I've got the Stern Guard Vets. I don't think my chances are very good with these Stern Guard Vets versus the Prime. So they're gonna to elect to take all their attacks and only go into the Von Ryan Leapers. They have four attacks each, of which I fail three. Nice. I'm wounding on fives. You need fives. Oh, there you go. That's pretty good. Four successes. So they have a four up save on fours. Oh, there's three failures. Wow. You killed one. I oh, was man. not expecting that. <laughs> you have nobody else that can fight. I don't have any more that can fight. The fight phase is over. Now it's time to score some secondaries. So my first one, assassination, is kill the characters. I haven't killed any characters yet, although I started. You tried. So my other secondary, secure no man's land, is have two objective in no man's land. I have one over here. Mm -hmm. I have one over here from the screamer killer. Mm -hmm. And you don't have anybody in range, so I control his objectives. I satisfy this objective. I gain five points. Yeah. I am now winning five to nothing. That is the end of my turn. It is now your turn, the bottom of the battle round. 
So every battle round allows both players to go and now it is my turn. Order operations, we both gain a command point. Then I'm gonna choose a doctrine. Space Marine doctrines, I can only use one per battle. There's three to select from. And I'm gonna choose tactical. Tactical allows me to fall back, still shoot, still charge. Ooh, very good, with your entire army. I'm also gonna choose an ultimate moment target. What that does is it allows my entire army to reroll hits and wounds against that one target. What do you want to try to kill? Well, there's a prime in my face, yeah. and I need it not to You'd be You'd like to be dead? Yeah. So the prime is my ultimate moment target. If I had to take battle shock tests, I would take them. You take a battle shock test on any unit that's below half its uh, starting value. Fortunately, you didn't have any guys go to below half strength. We are going to go to my movement phase. Because I need to consider my secondary being extend battle lines, I need to hold my home objective as well as one in no man's land, this being the safest bet, this brave lieutenant is going to leave the safety of that cover and simply hold onto that objective. This squad of Infernus Marines are going to also leave the safety of their cover. Ooh, they're coming to play. What's really important here is the ability to do overwatch and protect my home objective. Biologus is going to fall back. Typically when you fall back, you can't shoot, you can't charge, but because of the tactile doctrine, I am able to. The barb guns made you uh, slower. So they're only moving three. The stern guard are going to fall back oh, from man. both of these. That's annoying. Hey, you've got some tricks. So do the space marines. And ballistas on that objective and has very long range guns. So I'm just gonna leave it there. Now that all of my units on the table have done their movement, at the end of the movement phase, I can bring in my reinforcement. You have to be nine inches away from any enemy models. In come the Terminators. What's really important here is I might be able to make that charge there if the Prime survives, or I can go after those guns. This Terminator, if you can help me out, Nick. Oh, the librarian's going back here. So to start off the festivities of the shooting phase, I'm gonna elect the Stern Guard. Everything from the Stern Guard squad, because there's only three left, is gonna go into your Terminator Prime. Hit twice. Hit twice. One failure. No. Nope. But because of Oath of Moment, you can I get to reroll that. that. Yeah. So uh, three, that is hits. three hits. The swing of the weapon is five. Your toughness is five. I'm looking for fours. It has devastating wounds. So if I score a critical, they turn to mortal wounds. When I say mortals, mortals bypass your sick. Oh, they just go right through. I'm wounding on fours. I get one. That's not good. However, due to Oath of Moment, I get to take my fails. So good. And reroll, and I get two. Armor penetration one. Fives. I got one save and one goes through, it takes damage. Two damage. Two damage, no! So I start with six wounds. I'm down to four wounds already. So that squad, that's not the only weapons that squad. The squad has a different weapon. Luckily, they're modeled to show the weapons that they have. So what you shot me with is just one of the guys? Just one of the guys. Oh no! So we're going to go with the combi weapon. It's normally one shot. You're in rapid fire range, so I get an additional shot. I'm hitting on fours. I'm re-rolling. Oh. So that is two. That weapon, that combi weapon has anti-infantry, which means on a four plus, because it's anti-infantry four, you take a critical wound, which goes right to mortals. Because of devastating wounds. Because of devastating. Oh, it's a moment, reroll! Oh, I feel the second one. It is a mortal wound, which means I can't save it. Down to three wounds left. Oh, and you've got one more guy left in that squad! I get two shots, it's rapid fire one. I'm in half the range, so I get an extra dice. Hitting on threes. Got two hits. I got two hits. Oh, it's a moment. Oh, it's a moment. I got three hits. hits. Unfortunately, this is only a strength four weapon, so I'm wounding on fives. But any sixes is devastating wound. Which means it goes to mortal. It becomes mortal wounds. No, nothing. Oh, it's a moment, reroll. Oh, wow! Oh my goodness! So this is one of those very lucky rolls. Very All of these turn into mortal wounds. I can't save a thing. Three wounds left. He's gone! Just like that. Dice tell stories, Dice and tell we stories. love stories of playing on tabletop. You're gonna love this even more, because Stern Guard have a special rule. Oh, right. Bolter drill, once per battle in your shooting phase, after this unit is shot, if one or more enemy units were destroyed as a result of those attacks, this unit can shoot again. Oh my goodness, so that means you get to fire right now with them again? I can choose to. Well, why wouldn't you? So now I've gotta consider, is it best to do it now, or wait for, I'm not gonna wait. I'm gonna do their once per battle ability. I've killed something, I can shoot again, but I'm gonna do your favorite thing to do. Split fire. Split fire. High risk, high reward. Electing kind of the, the best guns for the job. Yeah. I think these two turn guard. Easily. Can take out that leaper. So I'm gonna take my heavy bolter and fire at your barb gaunts. They hurt me, I'm gonna to try to hurt them back. From the heavy bolter into the barb gaunts, I'm hitting on fours. Because I scored a critical hit with sustained one, I actually score two hits. I'm looking for threes. Two! That's two of them. AP one, however, you are slightly obscured with that statue. 
partly not visible because of uh, this statue, so I will get plus one to my armor save. So that minus one for your gun goes away. Two four ups. I got one, one goes through, it does two damage, and that kills one of the barbs. Ah! I've killed one Bob Grunt, I'm happy with that. All right, so now you've got the other two models to shoot at the Leaper. Now, the Leapers are minus one to be hit. They have stealth. Right, okay. I'm looking for fours though. Looking for a five. That is not a wound. Ah, he lives to fight another day. The combi weapon? That's stealth. Oh, oh, no hits. Ah, yeah, because I'm so stealthy. I'm hiding right in front of you. There's one way to get around stealth. And guess what that is? Flamers. Oh yes, there's a lot of flamers right there. Now, this weapon fortunately it has torrent, which means automatically hits. So you bypass my minus one to hit stealth. They just like flame the area. Winning on fours. All right, I have four ups to try to save it. Three failures, one success. Three failures equal a dead leaper because I only have three wounds. I am feeling pretty good about that now. I have the other Inferno squad. Interesting thing, I do have your Ripper Swarm back here. However, my Biologus has a very special role. So one that seems very unique in this edition of 40K. If it kills something, it goes to OC9. Which means objective control nine. And it has to do it in melee. Incredibly situational, but it would be so awesome if I pull it off. So I'm choosing to go with Inferno squad. One Power Blaster into the Ripper Swarm. One into the Screamer Killer, not shooting the other weapon. Only one is in, in range of the Screamer, but you don't want to overkill the Ripper Squad. Going to go into the Ripper Swarm, how many shots do I get? Oh no, I get five. You might have overkilled it oh, here. Oh no, give me some ones, give me some ones. Oh no. I mean, you could make some saves. I'm not gonna roll, I'm gonna roll one six. Watch it right here. I rolled two sixes! Kills one of the bases, three wounds six. left on the remaining Ripper Swarm. Only the Sergeant that's standing bravely in front can take shots at the Screamer Killer. How many shots do I get? I get four, I'm wounding on fives, of which I only get one. I save it. The Apothecary Biologus is going to take his Absolver Pistol and put it into the Ripper Swarm. It is a one-shot pistol, I'm hitting on threes. I only need a two. AP1 goes right through my armor save, That's it just does more damage. Which means there's a juicy, juicy Apothecary oh, Charge Oh, you're up. setting it up. All things coming up, Millhouse, and I love this. Psychic abilities are shooting attacks now. I'm going to go with the Librarian, yeah. who is going to attack you psychically with Mind Bullets, Ooh. as well as fire the Storm Bolter at you as well. First, I'm gonna do the Witch Fire. So it's a D6 shots, hitting on threes, wounds on threes, of which I only get one. On a six. No, it goes right through. So that is one dead gaunt. Now I'm going with the Storm Bolter. Uh, it is two shots, rapid fire two, so I get two extra shots, four, Hitting on not great. I am wounding on threes. I did get two wounds. All right, two wounds on fives. Oh, they both fail. I've got a really tough choice here. If I fire all of my Terminators into the Gaunts, there's a chance I might wipe you out and I can't make that charge. What this illustrates is that Warhammer 40K really is an objective game, not just a kill them game. In order to try to avoid outright killing them, I'm gonna take my Assault Cannon. It's gonna go into the Barb Gaunts. I am barely in range, but I am in range. Then I'm going to take my Storm Bolters on all the other Terminators. They're gonna go into your gods. I'll get six shots with the Assault Cannon. Hitting on threes, Ooh. I only miss once. I'm wounding on threes. Let's see how many I get. I fail two. Four up saves with the barbs. I got Ooh, all, all the three. Them. Oh, boom. All the other Terminators will find their Storm Bolters into your Termagons. Hitting on threes, that is a lot of ones. Any minus on that? No minus. No minus, so then my five up, which I got <laughs> two of! Woo! So you killed two more. I'm actually gonna take from here and here because I'd like to make that charge from the Terminators a little bit harder. A lot harder, actually. I am now over 11 inches away. Before we go to the charge phase, we have the star of the show. We're going to go with the Ballista's Dreadnought. Okay. Okay, it's got three weapons. It's got a last cannon, it's got storm bolters, and it's got its missile launcher. The missile launcher is strength five on its frag profile, which makes it really good at possibly taking out a barb bot. The last cannon is strength 12. It's meant to punch really big monsters and makes it really good to go after the screamer killer. Its storm bolters are only strength four. I think it needs to go after the Terminators. 
So you're gonna split fire three ways. I'm gonna split fire three ways because I'm looking to maximize the strength of all these weapons. 2d6 shots with that frag cap. Into the barb guns. Barb guns, so let's see how many shots I get. I Whoa. get a total of nine. The Bliss's Dreadnought has a special ability. If you're more than half of your starting strength, I can reroll the hit roll. I'm hitting on threes, rerolling. I'm gonna reroll those. Strength five to the toughness of four. I'm winning on threes. <laughs> there is no AP on this weapon. You are slightly obscured. This thing is giving me a little bit of obscurity for a couple of them, which means I get plus one to my armor save because I have the benefit of cover. And I save two of them to go through, meaning one is dead. I'll take that. Bliss is now gonna take its storm bolter, which is twin linked into the tremor gods. One is a miss. You're over your uh, half your certain strength. I still miss. One hit. Do you wound? Do I wound? I definitely do. Does it save? It does not. You've killed another one. Really quickly on that, Warhammer 40k with all of his different factions is really interesting. You're gonna have a playstyle that suits you. You've got swarms. You've got a lot of models. Yeah. Yes, they die quickly, but you have volume. Yeah, I've lost a lot of guys. I've lost way more than you. But I'm not feeling like I'm, I'm no, that no, much no, disadvantaged no. yet. I've got lots to work with still. I'm running elites. And so, every single one of those dead is a big deal. It hurts. It hurts a lot. <laughs> Ballistus last cannon. Screamer killer. Can you do it? Oh no! But however, I am a full wounds, which means that you get to reroll those because of the ballistus rule. Try again looking for threes. A whopping 12 to your toughness. Wounding on threes. There you that go. That is a wound. AP3. AP3. I have a save of a two up, which goes to a three, four, five. I'm saving on a five! I don't do it! No! At this point, I'm actually gonna use one of my precious command points, going down to one command point left to use one of the core rulebook stratagems for available to everybody that allows me to re-roll a dice. Command re-roll to try to get that five because I don't want it to take much damage. Please don't, please give don't. Give me five, give me five! Yes! Oh! Good for you, bad for me, D6 plus one damage. You did, however, cause me to spend a precious command point. That is it for all of my shooting. We are moving on to the charge phase. The first charge I'm gonna to try to sink is that librarian into your Termagants. You didn't pull from the back, that is still a nine inch charge. I had to choose one of these two units to make it harder to charge. I chose to make the Terminators harder to charge, the librarian still has a chance. I need a nine. Oh, double six. Double six, how many sixes have you rolled, sir? It would be so nice. You would that again, don't you? To do that again with the Terminator squad into the Termagant. You need what, 11? I need an 11. You need 11 on two dice to get in here. That's very unlikely to happen. Let's see it. Let's see it. Not a oh, chance. Ten. Not ten. a chance. Now, when you attach a leader to a unit, they may give the unit bonuses. The bonus that this leader no. gives to that Terminator no. squad, reroll charges. Oh, it worked for me. Maybe it'll work for you. Come on. 11. Oh, it's not enough! Four, five, six, seven! They're stopped short! This is a special one. You want that apothecary I to kill? I want that apothecary oh, to I want kill. to fail so badly. All right. You're fine. I'm You're fine. In. Six inches. Any other charges? Let's see. Does my lieutenant want to go hunt a screamer killer? No. <laughs> we are moving on to the fight phase, and I really want to see this happen. So we're going to go with the apothecary, apothecary first. first. Do it. I want to see it too. Kill him. Actually, I want him to see him safe. I'm going to roll four sixes. Watch it. I've got this canister in my other hand. You just smack him. Like, whack. Just, yeah, do it, do it, do it. I want to see it. I have a weapon skill of three. Oh no! Oh no! Strength of four, your toughness is two. At least I only need a Don't two. Don't get a one. Don't get a one. Oh, I just need a six. Watch it. If you're watching at home and you're in the Don't. chat right now, chant with me. Six, six, Don't. six, Don't. six, Don't six, 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 six! Oh, I, I felt it, but then it just went away. All right, you killed him, well done, and that triggers your special rule, which allows him to now be OC9, which means that he is gonna have a very easy time holding any objective he wants. After you fight, you can do a consolidation move. However, the way that consolidation works is you move towards the closest enemy model, but you have to reach it, or you move towards the closest objective marker, but you have to reach it. If you cannot do any of these things, you stand still. You get basically three inches of extra movement as long as you can go into an enemy unit or take an objective. So he's just gonna stand still, and uh, one day he's gonna use his OC9 and be on an objective. My librarian now is gonna go into your Termagants. I've got a weapon skill of three, a strength six to your toughness of three. I'm actually wounding on twos. There you go. I'm oh no! And then I don't save it. So you've killed one of them. Bye bye! 
All right, I think that's the end, but now I get to fight you back. So my gaunts are gonna pile in three inches so that they can fight you because you can only actually strike blows against a miniature yep. if you are in base contact or in base contact with a miniature that's in base contact. And the power move is compulsory. You have to do it. They're just one attack each. So I have four dice hitting on fours. I have one success. They're a strength three, so I need a five to wound. Did not wound. They tried to lick the armor. It didn't work so well. I was hoping to kill enough, force you to move towards me, and take you off that objective. Fortunately, I'm still on the still objective. Still on there by one freaking toe. That's not the whole story, because if I manage to fail my battle shock test here, then I will count as OC zero and not hold the objective. At the end of the turn, I'm gonna score some points. I killed your Chain of Prime, I killed your Leapers, and I killed the Ripper Swarm. Each of those are worth two victory points. I would have normally gotten six, however, that one maxes at five per turn. I am also scoring extend battle lines because I've held my home objective. He's taking that one. That's the five additional points. You had the lead with five zero. I've taken the lead now at 10 to five. I'm Lots sorry. happened. Lots did happen. That's only yeah. one of five turns. But we're both still very much in the game. I've got lots of stuff to work with yet, yeah. but there's a lot of threats on the board. A lot of juicy targets. It'll be an interesting round two. Wow, what a fantastic first turn. TAC has the lead at 10 to five. However, Nick is about to score some primary points as long as he can make his battle shot tests. I can't wait to see what happens on turn two. All right, so it's the start of turn two. Exciting things are gonna happen this turn. I'm gonna kill you with the Screamer Killer. It's gonna be fun. Beginning of the turn, we each get a command point. I'm up to two. I'm also up to two. My tokens go away, so these units are no longer count as in synapse, and now I can replace these synapse tokens. However, it's only within 12 inches of this unit right here. So it's not gonna be far enough to put on these gaunts right here. That's a win for me. Cause so they might, they might not hold that objective. I'm gonna put it on the Screamer Killer actually. And I'm gonna put it on this unit of gaunts. Before we go to the Battle Shock phase, it's time for the Tyranid special ability called Shadow in the Warp. I don't quite like the sound of that. I can say it differently. Shadow in the Warp. Shadow in the Warp is a once per game ability. I'm choosing to use it now because I think it's the time to do it. Every single unit in your army has to take a battle shock test right now. And it's at an additional minus one because of this neuro tyrant being on the board. Lieutenant, I'm a leadership six, minus one because of your neuro tyrant. I need to pass on a seven plus. Oh, barely okay. Yeah, Flamer so squad number one. I need a seven. Oh! Okay. Flamer squad number two with only three models left. Next oh! Stern guard veterans. Stern guard veterans. Still okay. Still On okay. a seven. Your ballistas dreadnought. Oh, please no. Seven. Oh, Barely, come but okay. on. Terminators. Terminators? Nine. Oh, They're okay. Librarian. That's gonna suck. Please, come on, Librarian. Oh, you failed, sir. Uh, oh, and the Apothecary. The, the cool Apothecary. Wait, that has, it has OC9. Does it have OC0 now if you fail the Battle Shock uh, test? That's, that's Seven. It's minus one. It goes to six, when he's ties. Oh, you're fine. Okay, I fine. still have an OC9. Well, it didn't there. really do much. So it goes to me, and I have to tell, take battle shock tests for any units that aren't half strength. Well, I actually have one of those, and this is the Tyranid Squad that is holding this objective right now. Normally, if I was in synapse, I'd get to roll three dice, but I'm not because I lost the token and I'm too far away from my synapse guy right here. So you're rolling so two I'll dice. So I only roll two dice. Five, oh, six, seven, okay. eight, nine. Oh, you're okay. We're good. You're okay. You're scoring a whopping 15 points right now because you're holding one, you're holding two, and you're holding three. Who's winning now, Tack? You're allowed to take the lead for a little bit. <laughs> I'm at 20 you're points. You're at 20 points to my 10. All right. Moving phase, the Screamer Killer is just gonna charge right up the field. I'm not gonna make the same mistake I did in turn one. You're gonna Overwatch right I'm now. I'm gonna yeah. Overwatch right now. Oh. There are five of them. <laughs> there are D6 shots <laughs> each. I need big numbers here. Oh, not, not it's great. terrible. A torrent weapon, auto hits. I'm going straight to wounding. I need fives. So seven two ups because you have no AP and I save all of them. Not a single wound goes through, sir. Am I gonna fall back with these guys? Yes, I am. Because if I leave them in combat, you're gonna slice and dice them and puree them. One thing that that does do is that takes away your shooting. It does take away my shooting. You, if you fall back, you cannot shoot. And finally, you have your barb. My barb guns are gonna stay still. Heavy weapons get plus one to hit if they don't move. Now it's my shooting phase. 
Mm. And I'm gonna shoot with the Screamer Killer first. And he's gonna go into the damaged Inferno Squad first, try to take it out. So I get D6 plus three shots, and I get a full four shots. <laughs> I have hit you once, but I have sustained hits, so that counts as an extra hit. So that's two hits, and wound you twice. Oh. AP two, so your save goes from a three to a four to a five. All right, so on fives? I killed one. You killed one. The Screamer Killer, oh, right. when it does damage with its scream attack, you have to take a Battleshock test right now. Minus one again, I need a seven or better. That is a six, they Ooh. are Battleshocked. That is too bad. Excellent, ha 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 ha. Psychophage is gonna shoot everything into this lieutenant. D6 shots from the Psychophage. It's got one shot! I'll take it, I'll take it. It does, however, wound, because it's a torrent weapon, so it automatically hit. Luckily, the enhancement I put on the lieutenant was the Artificer Armor. He goes to a two. Nice. On a save, he has a three. He makes it. Ah, oh, well, I didn't need it anyways. The Termagons are all gonna fire at this Inferno Squad right there. Hitting on fours. I got two sixes, which are sustained hits, so that counts as two more. Strength five, so wounding on threes. I've got one, two, three, four, five wounds at you. Got my three ups. Three ups. Here we go. Ah, I oh, killed no, one. You killed another one. Jeez. Lastly, the barb gaunts, and they're gonna fire at your stern guard veterans. This is obscuring the shots here, so you will get cover against this. They get d6 shots for each guy. Eleven shots, hitting on. Threes because I stayed still and I'm heavy, so I get plus one. And sustained hits. One, two, three, four, count them four. So you hit more than you shot. I'm wounding him threes. And excellent. Oh, my Lanta. You would normally get plus one. However, you can't increase your save past the three. So you still save at a three up. Ones and twos fail. One and twos fail. Oh, no. I killed one and one's got a wound. That's all my shooting. These guys can't shoot because they fell back. These guys are out of range. Let's move on to the charge phase. My psycho phase is gonna start it off. I'm gonna charge your lieutenant. So here we go. Oh, it's not good enough. I'm gonna use one of my command points for a reroll. So I'm gonna try rerolling that on that seven. Double sixes, 12 inch. You are going where? Next, the screamer killer is gonna double charge. It's gonna charge both units of Infernus Marines. I don't think I can fail this. Definitely not with a 10. <laughs> that is all the charges I'm gonna to make today. Today, for the rest of the day. Yeah, we'll see. Let's go to the Screamer Kill, it's gonna be so much fun. All right, so I get 10 attacks. I'm gonna put three of them into the Inferno Squad that has one guy left. The remainder seven into the other Inferno Squad with five guys. Go so into the squad with only one guy left. Hit you twice, one failure. Wounding on twos. One wound at minus two. Okay. You need a five. I, I could I could make this. You can make it. I could make this. You can make it. I can make this. Totally make it. No, you oh, can't! Oh. It does three damage, overkilling him and swiping him out. And then the next squad, I'm gonna do the exact same thing with seven dice this time. Here we go, hitting on threes, wounding on twos. All of them. I'm gonna kill them all. Right here, right now. Oh, you oh, did yeah. so good! You only killed two. I only killed two. Well done. The next combat of the fight first is the psycho phase. D6 plus one attacks for his attacks. Oh, that means six dice. I roll a five, plus one is six dice. Hitting on threes. Oh, three sustained hits. I get more dice than I started with. Well, I wound you on threes. It's only minus one, but each one that goes through will do two damage. I think I put the right enhancement on yeah, him. Yeah, I think so. Because I think I'm hoping he's Yeah, I think him. so. Oh, it's, oh only one. it's only one. That does inflict two damage, however, he also has a feel no pain. Special rule allowing you to ignore damage. That's the one a five up. Yeah, for each damage. I oh. ignore one more, he only you took one. one damage of all that. The cool thing about that Lieutenant is he hates Tyranids. Oh yeah? So he's got anti Tyranid. I've got five guys hitting on twos. Anti Tyranid four, critical wounds on a four plus. That is two. Uh, I don't save either. I have eight wounds remaining. And then your Inferno Squad gets the fight back. Two on three. That's a lot of dice. I need sixes. <laughs> Lots of sixes, please. And hey, you got, yeah, two. got two. All right. See if I save it. I save them both. But that was your fight phase. Uh, My turn is now over. Did you score anything? I did. I still managed to hold this because they're not battle shocked. I hold this because they're not battle shocked. What's your OC over here? I actually control this one as well because my monster has a greater OC than yours. Mm -hmm. So I actually control almost every single objective on the board. And what's important is not only are you controlling objectives, you're taking them away from me. By taking them away from me, 
When you pass a turn over to me, I'm gonna score less. I've now secured No Man's Land, giving me another five points, bringing my score to 25. I have not scored any assassination yet though, because your lieutenant is still alive. So at the beginning of your turn, we both get a command point. Then we do command feasibilities, and immediately that one that I gain, I'm gonna spend it on adaptive strategies, and I'm going to give this unit here the tactical doctrine. Oh, okay, that's smart. So they can fall back and fire and shoot like charge like normal. And because you've stuffed a screamer killer in my face, I'm going to return the favor. Also, moment on the screamer killer. Of course you are. Reroll everything against it. I'm going to choose the assault doctrine for the rest of my army. So that means they get to advance and charge. Oh, it's so good. All right, and then we move on to battle shock tests. That unfortunately is the stern guard. Oh, they're battle shocked. <laughs> so they can't be a target of a stratagem, which is okay. It would have been better if that was the Inferno Squad because then they couldn't fall back without making it a desperate escape and possibly losing guys. At the end of the command phase, we go into scoring. You've done such a good job at getting on objectives, taking them away from me. I only score five points for the one that I hold in my home and I'm gonna desperately need to get one in No Man's Land. You have 25, I have 15. So I've got I'm work. I'm winning, I'm winning. Advance everything. Advance everything, why not? Even though I could have walked closer to them, you cannot walk into engagement range. Because of tactical doctrine, these Infernus Marines are just going to go backward. I need the Terminators to go places. They're way off in the corner. So here we go. Oh, yeah. So they're moving 11, and I want to move to give me options. The infantry can just move through the walls of the ruins and get anywhere they want. That is end of movement phase. So I'm going to hit you with the flame. 12 shots. I need fires for any of these flamers to do anything. So they auto hit, but also moment, you get to reroll the fails. Reroll these, looking for more fives and sixes. Oh, it's I another one. one Seven two ups. One goes through. Finally do a wound to it. Finally did one wound to it. The ballistics will go into the screamer killer. So I'm gonna use the crack profile. So it's gonna be different than how I shot the frag earlier. Now it becomes two shots, but much stronger. The two shots hitting on threes, they both hit. So I'm wounding on threes. Roll that. Only one AP2, so you have a four up save. Four up save! Oh, it fails! Four. Command point, using one of my command points, can I get a four up? I got it! I will take that gladly, because that leaves my last cannons. Your last cannons are still really strong. I can't use the same stratagem more than once a phase. Last cannon. Ooh, this is the big one. Shots. Oh, hit. hit. Wounding on threes, strength 12. Oh, a moment. Oh, a moment. Give yourself a three. Yes. Oh no! Well, AP3, right? AP3. Two five ops to make. Come on. First one, save it. Second one, save it! The screamer killer! He is more than a screamer killer. He's a screamer blocker. Librarian now is going to witch fire into the Termagants and also Stormbolter. Four on, on threes. 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 Only one. Oh, goes right through. Down to three left. Ah! Then the Storm Bolter, again, two shots, rapid fire two, so four. Uh, one. And, oh, I save it! Dice are going my way. Are definitely going your way. That's okay, and that rhymed, because it is charge time. Easy charge, the Librarian is going into your Termagant. He's in. I'll just like touch here, so I'm closer to the objective. Then the Terminators are going to charge into the Termagant. Hope this all survives the Screamer Killer. I need to focus on taking objectives away. I think taking the objective is probably the smarter play, even though you want to kill the Screamer. Terminators are going to charge into the Termagants. Here we go, five. Oh yeah, you're in. Come on, come kill some Termagants. Into the fight phase. All right, Librarian into the Gaunts. Here we go. Oh, that's all four at AP1. All four at AP1. Oh, you've killed the squad. You've taken the objective. So what needs to happen now is if you can help me out, yeah, so these guys all move three inches. We actually have a handy dandy three inch widget. Look at this. Okay, so three inches. So this guy's gonna go over here. We're gonna pile in. Everyone's piling in three inches to get in base contact. They can only fight if they're in base contact or in base contact with one who's in base contact. And I think we're only gonna get four in. I'm gonna go with the power fist and the terminators first, hitting on threes with nine attacks. And then I'm wounding on twos. Oh! But that immediately kills three. I don't get a chance against that. Now the captain's fighting. Oh yeah. Hitting on twos. There you go, hit them all. Wounding on threes. 
I need a lot of these. No! Oh! So four more dead? Almost killed the squad. And now I consolidate. We have finished all the fight firsts. Mm -hmm. So then we go to everyone that doesn't have fight first. Mm -hmm. And it starts with the defending player, which in this case is me. And I get to choose, and I'm gonna choose the Psychophage before your lieutenant fights. D6 attacks. I got three attacks this time, a little better than the last time. I hit once, once. Oh. but sustained hits becomes two hits. Oh, that's true. So two wounds at minus one for you, sir. Yeah, you gotta save one of them or he's dead. I oh, you're cool. fine. So he's gonna fight you back? Not like that. I'm going to score only two points for no prisoners. I only killed one unit. And then I'm also gonna score my five for extended battle lines because luckily- You hold this objective and that objective. End of turn two, Nick has a lead 25 to 22, but there's a lot of meat left on this bone. Let's see what happens. Corbagons fall back and use Endless Swarm as they're in synapse range to get D3 plus three models back to the unit. Screamer Killer is set up to go after the Inferno 3. Sternguard dying to the Screamer Killer's Psychic Torrent Weapon. Psychophage fails to damage the Lieutenant. I kill him! Kill the Terminator. Terminator goes down to the Neuro Tyrant. Choosing to overwatch with his Infernus Marines into his still Oath of Moment target, the Screamer Killer. Five wounds into the Screamer Killer, Nick saving on two. Save all. Saves them all. Terminators are using the zero command point stratagem from their captain to heroically intervene into the Termagants and hopefully clear Nick off that objective. Screamer Killer takes down the Infernus Marines. Screamer Killer consolidates towards the objective. Terminators absolutely pace the Gaunts into nothing. Does your psycho fade? Oh, does six hits? Four wounds at minus one. I uh, killed oh, two this he's time. He's dead! He oh, so that's four damage. However, he has a five up. Ignore damage. He lives with one. Five up, feel a pain, saves his life. He's down to one wound. Tack passes the battle shock test on his lieutenant and holds three objectives for 15 massive points to make our score at the midway point of turn three, 39-42 in Nick's favor. Biologist with his OC9 takes away the objective from the cycle phase. Oh, both last cannons go through. D6 plus one for each weapon. Oh, it's enough That's to a kill dead, him. dead screamer killer. Terminators unload into the barbed gaunts and decimate them. Oh, I don't, I don't even get to roll. You have killed all of the neuro gaunts. So the Terminators steal Nick's home objective because the combined objective control of all of the Terminators and Captain are higher than the objective control number of the Tyrant. The Neuro Tyrant is an OC3, and the Terminator total is- For the Psychophage into the Lieutenant, I gotta take that one wound out. I get, oh, seven attacks. Hitting on threes, almost all of them with two sustained hits. On threes? On threes, six wounds at AP minus one. Just give me one failure. Come on. I don't want to. Come on. I don't want to. Come on. Legend of Norris, Legend of Norris. Oh, he's- one. One. Oh, it's just one. So that's two damage, but you could still pass us on your feel no pain of a five point. One at a time. One at a time. It's more epic. First one, saves. Second one. Come on, here we go. Ah. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, he, lives. he lives. He lives. Thank you for the game. I concede you have won the battlefield. What an amazing, fantastic back and forth game. We hope that you've learned a lot from this how to play 10th edition. Our final score is incredibly close. Also, I'd like to thank our sponsors for this episode. Wayland Games is your UK source and European source for anything Warhammer related. Frontline Gaming is your North American source for anything you may need related to Warhammer. Thank you, gentlemen, for a fantastic game. Thank you, our sponsors. And thank you to you for watching our fans. We appreciate you watching our games. We appreciate you following along on our channel. And if you like what we do, make sure to subscribe, become a member, and even join our Patreon. And it's JT McDowell saying, as always, until the next time we see you in the far-flung future of a grimdark universe, play on.